and welcome to the Gotham Outsiders, our Batman Pride Party this month. We have yet another Pride special for you all today. Coming in dressed in rainbows, I am your host, Bat Obsessive Chris, and throwing the confetti, my co-host TJ. Hello everyone, I am your Chris Proclaimed Batman Acolyte we have a very special guest today. We do, and I'm beyond excited. We have with us author of Harley Quinn Reckoning, Rachel Allen. Hey, y'all. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be talking to you today. I am so excited to be talking to you. Before we started recording, I was just telling you how much I love this book, but I have to say I'm beside myself. I've already told a million people to read it. (laughs) I love this book so much. Yeah, I started, I'm a procrastinator, started reading last night at like midnight and I'm, you know, getting chapter by chapter in and I'm like, I'm really into this. This is really good. And I'm just thinking about the themes of like the feminism and the experiences that women face in the lab and work environments. I'm like, Chris has got to be eating this up. Correct. So I knew I was, I was like, enjoying blah, 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 blah. it. Yeah, Chris was <laughs> loving, loving it. And we don't get to talk about Harley very much on this show so far, so this is going to be really fun. Yeah, she's. It was just a dream to be able to write this character because I've I've loved Harley since like the animated series a long time ago, and um, she's just like I've never had more fun writing a character. It's so much fun. Oh, you did amazing. She's just perfect. It's always exciting to see new writers tackle her, and you just you got her essence so well. Thank you. I was I was nervous going into it because of that. And I know a lot of people feel a lot of ways about her. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I was auditioning for it, um, I was auditioning kind of for Harley and an, an Ivy at the same time. And I wasn't sure what was gonna, you know, what they needed mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, but it turns out my voice is kind of like my writing voice or maybe my talking voice too. I don't know. It's kind of like flippant. And so it, it works well with Harley, I think. And it, it's fun. Yeah. 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 Even just reading the prose, like her narration, even in those first few chapters, like I could totally just hear her, her dialect and her sense of speaking. It, it just was very well done. And now we're chatting with you during Pride Month. So we have to start with Harley's bisexuality. How did you view your approach to writing her as a bicon? Um, oh, I like that word. <laughs> um, I, I just feel like she's bi. So um, so she should be by in the book. Um, <laughs> I, I know that she isn't necessarily always canonically by in every like show or movie or comic or whatever that she's in, but even when she's not, she feels by to me. So, oh, yeah. um, yeah, it just felt like that's just her. Yeah, absolutely. I loved the way that you did it. You just kind of wove it in as as you're saying just a part of who she is and it wasn't like a coming out story it was a bisexual woman being a woman in the world story and I loved that thanks that that was fun to write it that way too like I've written more of like um I don't know like get out all my like emo feels coming out um (laughs) story with a character before but like I felt like especially because she's um like sometimes the characters write are younger, like 15 or 16, when she's older in these books, like 18. And so I just felt like she, she like knows who she is and she's feeling pretty great about that at that point. So yeah. As she should, cause she's amazing. <laughs> so uh, if you could create your own anti-sexist vigilante persona, what would your name be? And what costume would you wear? Oh my gosh. Um... I don't even know. Um, I think I would steal something from the book and my name would be Descent Cannon. And um, (laughs) that made me laugh so hard. (laughs) And um, yeah, I, I would definitely wear like leather and rainbows. Those two things together feel like a good choice. Excellent choice. Always, always. Now, what does Harley as a character and what she stands for mean to you specifically? Um, Well, I did make her more of a women's rights vigilante than she sometimes is in other stories. Like, I really want to lean into that part. Um, And so I am a scientist. Um, As my day job, I'm a woman scientist. And um, it's 
sometimes I feel like I'm in a field that's behind by like 20 years in terms of um, how women are treated or, or people who aren't cis men are treated. Um, And so I just, yeah, I had just had a lot of angry feelings about it, especially at the time that I was writing, I was writing a lot of this book during 2020 when everyone was having a lot of strong feelings about all the things. And um, it was kind of cathartic to funnel them all into this book. Yeah, you definitely captured that frustration. I'm a femme presenting person in science and that like frustration is almost like learned helpless feeling you get when you just don't know what you can possibly do to change the situation. You captured it so beautifully and and added that cathartic element to it in the story. Thank you. Well, There's also some silly stuff in there too, though, for anyone oh, yeah. who's like yes. getting a PhD or something. I tried to drop some fun Easter eggs. Absolutely. It's also very funny. So it's not, it's not listeners. It is not like an emotional slog. It's, it is fun and light and cathartic and joyous and also hard and beautiful in very powerful ways. Thank you. I feel like that's who Harley is though. Like she's, she's like, I'm going to smash all the bad systems, but also it's going to be fun. Yes. And so yeah. <laughs> because that's so true. So you have clearly like a lot of feelings about Harley. What are your favorite versions of her? Movies, shows, comics, things like that? Um, like I love all of them. I love the animated series. I love, um, I can't, I can't remember how to pronounce his name, but um, it's this um, it's this graphic novel series. And um, the first one is called Harleen and it has this beautiful cover of like yes. half the face is, is Harley and half is Harleen. Um, and um, I love that one. Um, I love the, um, like the new cartoon show is really yes. fun. And I love how they like gave us Harley and Ivy together. Um, that was really exciting to watch too. And, and I love um, Margot and just, I love everyone who's Harley. <laughs> Harley is mean, so good. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of TJ's favorites. He brings it up a lot. We got, I love every version of Harley too. <laughs> yeah, that new animated show is oh, perfect. So good. So good. And now, the story and your author's note focus on the importance of women and girls in STEM. Can you talk about this as it relates to you? Um, yeah, like, I guess, you mean, like, personal things that have happened to me or just, like, yeah, I think, um, I mean, so many of my friends in grad school and I have had just, like, weird stuff said to us, um, especially a lot of it around, like, having children. Um, mm-hmm things like I've had friends be grilled about like whether the baby was planned or told like this really isn't a good time to have a baby um or like one of my professors told me like well you know when he had his baby he only took a week off and I'm like sir I I am I am giving birth it's a bit different (laughs) um but yeah so it's a lot of um, things like that um and things like just just weird uncomfortable things or like microaggression type things or feeling like your voice isn't heard equally mm-hmm. um i do have an amazing um woman um principal investigator who is my mentor uh now and she was also like kind of mentored me through part of grad school too and so having someone like that to lean on and to like get advice from was huge um but I feel sad that like, I don't think everyone gets that. And yeah, definitely not. Yeah. It, the story really made me think about how there's been sort of a more recent push to encourage young girls to get into STEM. And that's so important. Yes. But if we don't make it safe for them, once they get there, what is the point of pushing them into it? You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. we're not actually helping them once they get into these colleges and things like that at all. And we don't warn them. We're just like, it's amazing in STEM. And then, you know, it's, it is, but it also isn't in some ways. Yeah, I totally agree. And and yet like the science is so fun to do. And it's like, when I go to work, I love what I do. Um, But yeah, we have, we still have a lot of work to do. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, based on what you already have said, I think I know the answer to this one, but I'd love to hear a little more thoughts on it. So Harley is generally a therapist, so she usually is the counseling direction. In this version of her, you have her go more neuroscience. Can you talk a little bit about that decision, what went into it? Sure. Um, so I have a PhD in neuroscience, and I think brain science is just really cool. Yeah, um, so that's amazing. I, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> um, so I kind of went more of that route um, while she's an undergraduate, or she's actually like in a gap year program in this book. But um, eventually, I do still see her like becoming a psychiatrist um, and like going to where you'll expect her to land in terms of that. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was really fun to talk about a lot of science in the book and I liked being able to do that. Yeah, it was really great. Thanks. And Harley has to deal with mansplainers, a common occurrence in academic spaces. What would you say to women going into spaces like academia where male dominance is likely to complicate their lives? That is a really hard question. Yeah. That was on purpose. I was gonna say, we definitely went for the soft questions with this interview. <laughs> I know, I'm reading it. I'm like, this is Chris asking this, but yeah. I'm narrating. Yeah, it's it's hard because I think when I was um, like a, maybe a first year grad student, I would have been like, yeah, I tell them all to do it anyway. It's great. Mm. And I don't know, like, I think, I'm kind of torn on what I would tell people, or maybe I would tell people to follow your passions, but also be careful and make sure that like your passion for what you want to do as a career aligns with like all of your core values as best it can. But then I also don't want women to like not go into like amazingly cool fields. So it's, it's hard. <laughs> it is. So become vigilantes. Is <laughs> yeah, That's the solution. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm reading the book right now, and like, to me, Harley seems to be giving a voice to all these women and mm -hmm. you know, femme presenting people that went through these things and maybe didn't get to stand up for themselves, unfortunately. And seeing her do it, like, I think it's very powerful. So again, like, Chris has to be <laughs> again very into this, <laughs> very accurate. Yeah. So um, kind of staying with the hard questions for a minute, uh, the story covers the difficult topic of violence against women, both the like micro violences in the form of microaggressions, but also macro violences. We have you know, domestic violence, we have assault and rape. How do you approach writing this in a way that conveys the gravity and handles it sensitively at the same time? Um, I, I guess I just try to think about the characters as like, people and um and like what they're going through and um and I don't try to think about what happens to them as like a plot point I just mm -hmm. try to think about like them as a person and um and like what's their emotional journey and um and yeah I this was kind of tricky for this particular book because um DC had a lot of strong feelings on like how much should be in the book. So I pulled back a lot and I ultimately think that that was a good idea because the cover seems really young. And I think that like people younger than I was expecting are probably picking up the book. So um, I think that was a good call. I think you did an amazing job. It's a really hard thing to do. And now considering the time we're living in when the rights of women and queer people are in threat, what do you see as the role of stories like yours? Um, well, I love stories where, I mean, I guess, I don't want to spoil it. I guess it doesn't end like the way a con contemporary book ends happily. Um, but I love stories where like queer characters get to be together and it's sweet. And, um, and, uh, I, yeah, I, I hope no one is disappointed with the ending because there's a character that makes an appearance in like the very last chapter. And so something else is going to happen in books two oh. and three that I think people will really like. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm very excited for that. I'm going to put you on the spot. Is it Poison Ivy? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. See, that's a spoiler that I'm here for. And I feel like <laughs> anyone listening is going to be like, oh. 
I already wanted to read it, but now I really need to read it. <laughs> yes, thousand percent. That's exciting. Oh my God. So that you're currently working on books two and three. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I finished book two really recently and then I'm just outlining book three. So, oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm like, I, I wanted to come back to your, your idea of people being disappointed in the ending because it's not super happy. I feel like there's a, a, thought these days that like we need only queer joy and any ending or story that isn't super positive featuring queer people isn't then a good story or or isn't deserving of our attention but I think there's spaces for all sorts of endings and all sorts of stories so I'm here for a bittersweet ending so don't hold back please (laughs) yeah yes I agree So this story, I think, falls into the category that has uh, sort of women's revenge fiction, which we are kind of collectively on the internet fondly calling good for her stories. Um, How do you see Harley's role as an empowering and cathartic force for chaotic good in women's lives? Um, Yeah, I just think she's a really passionate person and she wants to help the people that she's friends with and even like, you know, women that she's not friends with and um and the way that she helps is um a little different but (laughs) that's okay um (laughs) so yeah she just she does throw all her chaoticness at problems and 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 that's one of the fun things about writing her like whenever I would get to something where I was stuck I'm like what would Harley do I'd be like well what what would I do and I'd think of like five things that like well she can't do any of those so like throw (laughs) those out um and yeah it was fun yeah I love I love chaotic Harley it brings me joy (laughs) this book really (laughs) reminded me have you ever you seen the movie Promising Young Woman yeah no. same vibe very Chris you'd love it oh my god yes that's the one with hey. scary Bo Burnham right <laughs> the girl from Doctor Who and the <laughs> what is her other movie the the book everyone reads in high school Fitzgerald oh, great cast yes okay she's in the most recent adaptation of that too it's yeah, great it's Carrie Mulligan I know yeah, I know what you're yeah okay okay <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I loved that. The girl from the movie of the book everyone reads in high school is a great like, way to remember. Why can I not remember this title? Uh, uh, it was so really good though. I, I hadn't read prom or I hadn't seen Promising Young Woman, but like I was I was halfway through writing the book or like doing revisions. My editor was like, you know how I've been pitching this in-house is as like Harley Quinn meets Promising Young Woman. Yes. And she was like, Have you seen this movie? And I was like, no. And she's like, you like go watch it immediately and so I did and I was like what <laughs> that's yeah. incredible it's uh, women being done with men shit <laughs> yes, <it> sounds <laughs> like my good. genre <laughs> yeah you love it and now this story also tackles the idea of classism can you speak to the importance of including Harley's poverty as a central feature yeah um I think canonically um she does not have a lot of money growing up in, in a lot of this stuff that I've seen. Um, and then um, I also like grew up in a household with, especially at times, like we just didn't have a lot. And so if it's possible, I like to put those kind of details in to books. Um, Cause I think it's definitely getting better in the past, like five to 10 years, like what I see in young adult books, but there was a time when I felt like it was never there or I could like, I just got this feeling that like, it was like a poverty story written by like a rich person and it was mm-hmm. like they're like making everything seem I don't know I just had weird feelings reading a lot of poverty stories but more recently I've read a lot of them that are really good like um have you ever read Sarah Lemon's books no um she really sounds good. familiar but no I haven't I'll have to look them up yeah she, she wrote like done dirt cheap it's the cover with like the girls on the front looking like a motorcycle gang oh okay, okay. that sounds great yeah. Uh, so there are a lot of small, subtle ways that this story ties into the greater Gotham world with like Joker, Bernie the Beaver, Detective Montoya. How did you go about deciding where, what, and how to use these ideas? Um, I like read a whole bunch of comics and watched a whole bunch of, sh- like rewatched a whole bunch of shows. Um, it was like research and <laughs> And then I took notes on like, oh, that would be fun to put in or that would be fun to put in. And then 
I tend to take it too far. So then DC will be like, is this like necessary? And I'm like, no, <laughs> it's, <not>. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun. Like I did have a game of the girls playing um, kiss, Mary kill with like the different um, Batman, like hero or like DC universe heroes. And I did have to take that out, which I get why, because um like probably it's not cool for the other brands if if Harley's saying like Aquaman has fish breath and the flash is a one minute man like those are probably not cool things um <laughs> so I, I had to cut that but um but mostly I they need those. Stuff. I know <laughs> like, please I share this was... deleted scene oh, oh my gosh. deleted scene <laughs> so funny that's so funny oh god she would absolutely play kiss very kill you're not wrong <laughs> Oh my gosh. I'm going to do an improv question here. Um, since we mentioned the Joker, I am I thought the way you integrated the Joker and how he kind of inspired Harley was really effective and clever. Like it was very minimalistic, at least in the part of the book where I'm at. Yeah, um, it is. She sees him distantly and then she thinks there's something empowering about taking on another identity like that. And I just, that was so well done. So my question is like, the Joker isn't seen as the most progressive part of her character these days. So like, how did you take that aspect of her character and decide how to incorporate it? Um, yeah, that's a great question. So originally I thought that she, I thought the Joker was supposed to still be her love interest for this trilogy. So I wrote it that way. And then we had more talks with, with my editor and DC um, they were like, especially since this is for teens, like we don't want this message. We don't want this in there. And I was like, yeah. And they were like, we want you to write a Harley story where she stands on her own. And then we talked about like, she could still have these moments of being inspired by what he's doing, but never like be his girlfriend who gets abused. Um, and I feel really excited that I got to write that kind of Harley story for teens. I do totally think people can do young adult stories with elements of abusive relationships of all kinds and tell powerful, amazing stories. But since her story has been told that way so many times before, I thought this was really cool to be able to do. Oh, I agree. It's, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Like most versions of her, she has not has to, but she gets kind of beat down and picks herself back up and in this one like it's really empowering just to see her you know pick this life for herself and it was very well done agreed thanks and now the queer dc comics family seems to be growing every year so what character do you hope or predict will come out next if you had your pick Ooh. um everyone <laughs> same everyone, everyone. <laughs> um if you could I go to... wild <laughs> uh if I had to narrow it down to like one specific person gosh I don't know um sometimes Batman and the Joker seem pretty obsessed with each other Oh, yes yeah. See, maybe they should be honest about those feelings <laughs> <laughs> no maybe there I... would be less violence if they just talked about it <laughs> I need the spinoff. <laughs> Can you write it, please? I yes. need a petition, DC. Oh, yeah, it's a YA spinoff of this where the Joker, since he doesn't fall in love with Harley, he does fall in love with Bruce Wayne. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> so uh, what are your favorite DC comic queer ships, canon or just in your heart? Um, well, I love... Harley and Ivy together like it just makes me so happy um and who else do I love in DC I don't know what all Robin is canon right like I feel like I've read like a story where um where Robin is queer and it was really awesome yes yes yep yeah we have Tim Drake Robin yeah that's the one yeah but in our hearts, they're all queer. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, who are y'all's favorites? Well, uh, so we love, TJ and I love Tim Drake, as mentioned, and we ship him with the Superboy that's his best friend named Connor Kent. 
Yeah, that's like top tier. <laughs> but uh, I love- Harley Ivy though too. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yes. they're good. I love Midnighter and Apollo. I think they're amazing. I'm trying to think of any others that I'm uh, Tim Com's literally just where my mind goes. I'm like Tim Com. <laughs> CJ Tim has Com. a one track queer ship mind at the moment, and it's Tim Com. <laughs> I have an agenda. It's pretty bad right now. <laughs> There's a, there's a lot. We just uh we've been covering the DC Pride anthology. There were a lot of really cute couples in the anthology this year. So, yeah. Is Wonder Woman oh. for queer? She gives me Yeah, vibes. she is. She is. Yes. She's bisexual. Oh, she they only sometimes remember that in comics, but she <laughs> she Yeah, is they don't bisexual. talk about it much. Yeah. Batman okay. and his BFF Ghost Maker. They were like friends that traveled and trained together and it's super gay. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yes uh and oh um the uh nubia and io so another kind of amazonian queer ship that's really good right now as well do you have any queer media you're enjoying that you'd like to recommend to our listeners oh yeah i'm like simultaneously watching both first kill and Heartstopper, and my heart oh is like my exploding God. with happiness <laughs> great combo um because my husband and I are watching first kill because he will watch like like everything vampires he's actually I started watching him it without him and he was like whoa he was he felt a little betrayed um (laughs) and I felt (laughs) but um but yeah so I'm watching both of them and they're both like I'm loving them both so far is he into Buffy the vampire slayer yeah yeah that's my favorite yeah (laughs) He, he's like obsessed with Buffy the Vampire Slayer and we have this Same. weird like almost meet cute but not where I was at a party in college dressed as Buffy the Vampire Slayer <laughs> and he was upstairs and I was downstairs and we didn't meet but we did meet like the next semester when I was not dressed as Buffy but that's fine sad <laughs> but you did dress as Buffy for your wedding right like that <laughs> <laughs> She does have like a wedding dress outfit. So of course she does. (laughs) But it's a prom dress. Everyone says it looks like a wedding dress though. Anyway, yeah, hard stopper, great. And then first kill, I just started watching that too. Yeah, they're so good. And I feel like um, like just to share something about myself, I I like didn't understand what I identified as when I was younger. Like I, if you had asked me, I w- would have said like, oh, I'm a straight girl that kisses girls um, because I just didn't, I just didn't know. And so I love that there's all these like amazing shows and books and just like sources of positive relationships that people can see um, and maybe they'll figure out who they are sooner than I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also didn't realize I was queer until 26 so um, definitely it happens for sure yeah all these books that you know they're gonna help people and I feel like yours is definitely one of them in in more than one way like this is such an important book I agree thousand percent so we often ask people uh this question on our show which is uh what is the dc like universe hill you will die on so what's the kind of small thing and it could be about harley or it could be about anything else that you will like fight for all the time and it doesn't have to be anything serious because some of the ones we've gotten are like this costume is better than that costume or you know whether or not bruce wayne does in fact eat pussy was a whole big one we oh, yes. <laughs> This is a YA novel, Chris. Uh, this is not a YA podcast. <laughs> um, okay. In serious ones, the hill I will die on is Harley Quinn is a feminist. Um, I get the most flack about that. Um, like whenever DC posts anything about this book, um, I get a lot of like people coming in being like, she's not a feminist because she this, this, and this, and she is. Yes. so there yeah, um yeah. you are correct then the silly one i would say is um i think that both like pink and blue hair pigtails harley and red and black diamond harley are valid and oh. i kind of feel like pink and blue pigtail is like her everyday look and then like red and black is like her like doing stuff and smashing things look so i, I will die on that hill too <laughs> i love that yeah, that is that is a bold stance, but it's one I agree with. So. 
<laughs> so if you could take one Sorry. DC Comics character to pride with you, who would it be and why? Oh, um, I mean, I, I feel like I should say Harley because she'd be pretty fun at pride. I had a feeling. Um, <laughs> I also think it would be fun to take like somebody that's kind of a cinnamon roll, like, like King Shark. Well, he's oh. not always a cinnamon roll. It depends on, yeah, you know. The book like the, the show yeah. version of him that's a total cinnamon roll yeah that would yes. be really cute I, why do i feel like he would wear one of those like lesbian defender t-shirts like <laughs> yeah because he would <laughs> <'Cause that's accurate. laughs> what about like hug a shark instead of like hug a mom like <laughs> like free shark hugs <laughs> free, yeah, shark, free hugs. shark hugs oh my god <laughs> now i want a little plush of him that just says free shark hugs <laughs> please Oh, it's been so good talking to you. Could you tell our listeners about any upcoming projects you have they should look out for and where to find you on social media? Um, sure. So I, the most things I'm working on right now are Harley's book two and three. Um, and then I also have stack O sapphic fiction that you should, these are a lot of good sapphic books if you guys want to read them. Um, oh yes please <laughs> and then can you send us a picture of that we'll include oh, yeah, it yeah. perfect sure. um and then I am on TikTok and Instagram um I am like technically on Twitter but I don't go on Twitter very much fair <laughs> what's your uh, handle on Instagram and TikTok I have no idea that's okay. <laughs> that's you know what okay. we'll find you and we'll link to it so. <laughs> okay sorry yeah. we'll <laughs> totally include it. fine. it's like my name probably but I don't know for sure <laughs> okay we will we will include it for you <laughs> okay thanks. I think it I think it's like Rachel underscore Allen <laughs> like, it's <an> awkward <laughs> moment where I know your handle better than you do <laughs> that's, that's so funny well I now I'm even more flattered that you followed us back on Twitter if you're really yeah. on there so thank you yeah and this has been so great you oh my god please come back anytime I've I would love to talk about anything any Harley anytime yeah if you if you want to come on for a book episode and do Harleen with us we haven't covered that one yet so oh yeah that would be amazing okay so good (laughs) TJ has been trying to get me to read it and I said I would wait to do it on the show (laughs) you'll like it it's it's I'm sure yeah well thank you so much for coming on the book was honestly perfect i loved it so much thanks y'all thank you for having me it it was great thank you for listening to the gotham outsiders you can find me chris on twitter at the myth of psyche where i talk about feminism psychology and batman of course but you can also find me on my new show at thirsty untune over on the Talking Comics feed where Bronwyn and I review webtoons and drink wine and also review romance novels. You can also find me writing reviews at TalkingComics.com and I am now accepting consulting clients. So if you need someone to do sensitivity reading or consult on psychology or queer identity, I'm your person. You can also find my co-host TJ. At TroyFin2 on Twitter where I talk about books, gay things, gay books, and all sorts of things, including Batman pretty often, way more than I used to. Uh, And I recently became an official librarian. So you can find all sorts of book reviews that I post just for fun. A lot of advanced uh, reviews of books that haven't come out yet. So if you're looking for a nice gay read, please hit me up. You could also find me talking on other podcasts just here and there if you search my name on any podcast service provider that you listen to. And you can find us both talking about Batman all the time at the Gotham Outsiders. So join us next time. Same bat time, same bat place.